Hey, hey, what is up? Andrew, YouTube here, full-time drummer and drum teacher based right here in Auckland, New Zealand. We are back. We've got kind of a PayPal request. I'll show you what I mean. Hey, Andrew, I don't know if you are interested in reviewing rig rundowns, but Gear Masters just released one by Paulina Villarreal of The Warning. By the way, she is one of Drumio's nominees for Rock Drummer of the Year and was also voted Best Up-and-Coming Rock Drummer by Drummer World magazine a few months ago. Fantastic. If doing rig rundowns isn't... <laughs> that's difficult to say. If Rooney's rig rundowns... <laughs> if doing rig rundowns <laughs> isn't really your thing, just keep the PayPal donation as a gift for your coffee fund and maybe a future Yoyoka request. Andrew from Texas. Andrew, thank you so much. Uh, I don't know if this is my thing. Let's check it out. Gear Masters. Okay, this is new to me. The warning's not new though. Warning's great. Hi, I'm Paulina. I am the drummer from The Warning. And right now we're in the North American leg of our Error World Tour. It's the second leg we're doing here in the US. And we're very excited. We just released a new song that is called More. And this is like one of the first times that we've been playing it throughout this tour. So it's been really cool. I've actually had to modify my kit to play that new song. So I'm gonna walk you through it. This is a DW performance series and uh, she's called Bonbon, which is marshmallow in Spanish. I got it during the pandemic and I was gonna. I don't even get a hint of just maybe just a little bit of the um, Spanish accent. It sounds like a California, I don't know. I don't know, but it sounds like a, just a normal California accent to me, amazing. Oh, bro. I love the finish on these kits. I had a white concept. PDP concept kit, very similar look to this. Looked absolutely brilliant. I'm gonna like use it for the first time and the pandemic happened. So it feels, it still feels very new to me. This is a 10 inch Tom. This is a 12 and that usually I go for a 14 here, but right now for live, I'm using a 16 and this is an 18. So I just Damn. can get like that deep sound. Big I use the Toms a lot like for main like rhythm parts. So I really wanted to get like that depth in there. My bass drum actually is a little bit shorter in depth. This is 22 14 bass drum. My snare. 22 by 14 kick drum size. I believe, for me personally, the perfect size. I actually prefer a shallower kick. Uh, makes the stage sort of work a bit better too, I find, especially if you're on tight stages. They're not typically on tight stages, but I think sound like punchiness, that short distance between the beater, uh, the batter head and the rezzo head. I don't know, it just seems to work. It's a classic size, I dig it. A lot of people, there was a point where a lot of people were going for the real cannon, long sort of conical shaped bass drums. I dig this. Is a hand hammered black beauty. Ooh. As you can see, she's a beauty. Uh, I really like the snare. I've Once again, I've, I've been using it for kind of a short time. It was actually, a gift so I'm very happy with it it has a very deep sound it sounds gritty it depends on obviously how you tune it but my jump the Carlos always like gets just such a beautiful hard-hitting sound out of it I use if you're not familiar with that snare drum she's talking about Ludwig Black Beauty uh, absolutely classic one of the most recorded one of the, the most popular snares of all time hand hammered i don't think that was traditionally i don't know you guys correct me in the comments i don't think hand hammered was traditionally uh finished on the shell so it's, that might be a bit more of a modern thing but just a standard black beauty which is a brass shell with a nickel plating iconic snare one of the most recorded snares of all time for a good reason it just sounds great just works clear pinstripe remo heads again 10, 12, What's 16, the fate of Buzzkill? 18 on the snare. I used the controlled sound coded one from Remo. So the tuning, especially in the toms, usually varies. These are usually tighter so I can get a good bounce from it. It sounds higher. I use the exact same heads as Paulina. I use uh, pinstripes and a CS dot on my snare. Wow. But these ones. What does she use on the kick though? Are usually kind of tricky sometimes because I like them very loose. I like them deep sounding 
but sometimes we get a lot of resonance. But Carlos, my drum tech, has this very cool trick. I don't know if you can see inside the the drum, there are cotton pads. We use those to remove our makeup after the shows. And Carlos, one day, he just put them there. And it really dampens the sound, but it doesn't like mute it completely. So that's great. So I can get them a little bit loose without it being a complete mess for it. Perfect. So um, those cotton balls in the bottom of your floor, Tom, they act like a, I guess, almost like a natural gate or natural compression on your drum. So you've got your floor tom like this and you hit the top and the cotton balls are going to bounce around because of the air pressure going through the drum they're going to bounce up and land and when they land they're going to dampen the uh, floor tom overtones and resonance it's a great trick i think the first person i heard to do that might have been john bonham um using the old cotton balls in the floor tom trick because as she said floor toms are big they're big diameter they're a big drum right and so they're going to resonate they're made to resonate and sometimes we just want a shorter doom and not a doom anyway let's keep it going our sound engineer so i am a sabian artist and i use hhx all over my drum kit this is an 18 hhx this is a 16 this is also 18 the ozone evolution and a 20 China. This is a 14. I use this on very few songs, but it does make a huge difference because I keep this a little bit more close than I do this one. So every time I just want to like ride over here when I'm doing like double bass pedal things, I do. I use this one. This is a little splash. I love it. I don't use it as much as I would like to, but hopefully in newer songs I can incorporate it more. My ride, it's a raw bell dry ride, 21, and it's a beauty. Sounds this good. is my absolute favorite symbol Ozone? ever. I've been using it for years, I think for like six years now, and it has such a cool sound. I crash a lot all the time, but I used to have just a normal, like another HHX over here, but this, it just sounds so much darker, so it really cuts through like the brightness of these HHX ones. I just incorporated this cowbell, this LP cowbell to my drum kit because our new single more has a part with cowbell. And it's really fun using it. I haven't used a cowbell in like more cowbell. years. And um, more cowbell. it has like its little tricks because sometimes it just like really falls, but it sounds so cool. And it's just really fun to just like drive in that. I love it. I am a big birth artist. Man, finding a good clamp for a cowbell, good setup for accelerate percussion where it's not going to move, like setting up a tambourine or a cowbell. I guess that's why people started using a lot of sample pads because you can just program the sample and just hit the pad. Hitting a cowbell, I find they just always move around. But anyway. I use 5B barrel tip. I just changed drumsticks actually. I used to use 5A, but I'm a very hard hitter and I wanted to stop. Like it just felt really light in my hands. So I got this heavier set and I've been using it this whole year and it has made such a good difference. I don't have to use as like much strength to get like a very hard, deep sound out of them. This DW rack that I have, it's actually been like very modified by my dad. My dad like loves hardware and uh, it used to be like a little bit too large for me so he like grabbed like a saw and just started cutting everything to my wow. size and uh, everything is just like so meticulously measured and marked so like every time that we're touring like my drum tech and everyone in production can set everything up really quickly so it's very efficient every time we open for for a band or something we can get everything done in a very short amount of time so we're not bothering anybody and it's great and it's also very comforting to arrive to each show knowing that the measurement of everything is going to be exactly the same yes. each show so you don't get like wonky drum sets sometimes it's all measured precisely I really don't like rack systems. I've never really needed them for the type of gigs that I do, but in terms of efficiency and quickly setting up, they just make total sense. As she says, you can just mark out things. You can attach um, symbol 
stands to the rack or Tom mounts to the rack and then, you know, just bring the rack in, put the rack down and, and put all the drums in place. All done. It is, it's just, it is very, very easy and very efficient. Smaller stages a lot of the time, they're not, they're not even going to fit all this stuff. So, or it's going to make that footprint just a bit awkwardly big, but it's a great idea. I mean, rack, rack systems are tried and true and bigger gigs, excellent. The pedal that I'm using is a machine DW pedal. I, I used to use a direct drive from DW, but after they released the chain one, I prefer this one so much more. And uh, it takes a while getting used to it, but once you get the hang of it, it's so easy to control. And again, I'm a very hard hitter, so it just comes back to me in such a easy way for me to like not hurt myself while I'm playing. And I just really love it. I've been using it for a while. Um, in my hi-hat, I'm using a 9000. DW. I'm a Classic DW girl. 9000. And uh, for my MIDI pedals, I'm using some Roland MIDI pedals. They're very heavy, which is great. So basically, um, I launch all of our like stems and click through Ableton. And uh, I used to have to do it with like manually, but it, it kind of looked really like clunky. Like after every single song, I would have to go and click enter. So with these MIDI pedals, I can launch the whole show without anybody noticing. And uh, I used to have like, I've been through so many MIDI pedals and MIDI pads, but these are so great because they're really heavy. So like, they're not going to be set off by like the slightest movement. They're like, it takes a good hit for it to change. That's good. So, wow. The scene. So they're fantastic. I have a start pedal and a that freaks me out. My worst nightmare that I'm accidentally going to hit a pad or a MIDI pedal like that and set off a track, you know, almost like the demo function on a cheap Casio keyboard. I'm paranoid about that. So that just makes so much sense. It's so smart to make it really like a deliberate action to actually start that off. Stop pedal, just in case something goes wrong. We're all human, so sometimes we need to stop the click track. It's just so efficient for everybody to have these systems and it's fantastic. The drum throne that I use is the DW Airlift 9000. It's great. I use it in the lowest setting because I'm really short, So, but it's really comfortable. I love it. Uh, for in-ears, I use in-ears audio. They are fantastic. Usually we grow them out really quickly, but these have just like really these are drum lasted. Ears, by the and way. usually the problems that we have with in-ears is like the cables at one point, like they just don't plug in correctly and you don't hear stuff. But these ones have lasted wonderfully. What I hear the most in my mix is the bass because me and my sister are just like really connected when we're playing so having that like those bass ends just like really makes a big difference for my kick block i have a kick block because i hit it very hard and usually it just goes so far sometimes like it's when we didn't worse. have a kick block sometimes god loves my drum tech would just have to be like there in front of the drum just like for it to not move so that is a lifesaver and i love it so that was my gear run through. Um, once again, we are The Warning. Our webpage is called thewarningband.com. We are The Warning Band on all social media. So go check us out. Thank you for watching. Wow. What a fantastic, confident, and informative presenter. Paulina Villarreal, fantastic rock drummer and just the way that she knows her gear. She knows her setup. She knows why things are where they are. I mean, obviously, right? But just a real depth of knowledge. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think of this type of video where we're actually looking at gear? Me, myself, and I. Allow myself to introduce myself. I like good, solid, stable gear. And honestly, that's about it. I don't need a lot of fancy gear. I don't need a lot of gear. But it can be really interesting to see what people use. And what was really good here when she was explaining why she used a certain thing or, you know, when she explained like going between different pedals, for example, and the reason for that. So if I think there's value in these type of videos. Um, Andrew from Texas, thank you so much. And I'm just wondering what you guys think and whether you want more gear-related stuff like this. Do you want gear demos on the channel, perhaps? Um, 
you guys just let me know and um, we can do that but yeah as I say for me it's all about functionality even in terms of drums themselves I get a little bit pickier when it comes to heads heads have a big impact on the sound of the drums I get a bit picky with heads um, cymbals and snare drum I've got to have a good snare drum um, but in terms of drums uh, uh, actually when I say this actually positioning of drums is pretty important to me I do have to have things where I want them which is typically pretty tight in and just right I, I do make a bit of an L shape from a tom snare floor tom um, just to make things smooth um, but I'd keep it very very simple as you would have seen in my covers I'm covering songs that have got multiple cymbals multiple toms sometimes different snare drums I just cover it all on a four piece I just keep it really really simple but I really dug that video and it makes me want to check out more of the warning I haven't got to them for quite a while I have done a bunch of warning songs and quite a bit of analysis on Paulina Villarreal but need to get back to them because they're a crazy good band and I just really dig the whole vibe but um Andrew from Texas thank you so much for this pick your support of the channel and guys I'll catch you on the next one take it easy ciao